Hi, this is Joe Ziemba, and I host the podcast When Football Was Football here on the Sports History Network. I'm also the author of the recent book, Bears vs. Cardinals, the NFL's Oldest Rivalry. These two clubs first met in 1920 and will be renewing that rivalry again this year on December 24th in Chicago. In honor of that occasion, I'm very pleased to announce that the Sports History Network will be offering two free copies of my book to its listeners. To qualify for this great gridiron giveaway, just go to the link at sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash Christmas 2023. That's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash Christmas 2023. Please enter by the closing date of December 15th so that we have enough time to contact you for a personal inscription of the book and then ship the book to you for arrival prior to December 25th. And as always, Thank you for listening to the Sports History Network, and good luck. Winning a major bowl game has always been an important step to a football program in the NCAA college football. But winning the four major ones is quite a feat indeed. Timothy P. Brown of FootballArchaeology.com joins us to tell us a story of Georgia Tech and their Grand Slam. Tim has a scoop on this and more coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pigpen, your portal to positive football history. And welcome to Tuesday and footballarchaeology.com's Timothy P. Brown joins us to talk about another one of his amazing tidbits on football history. Tim, welcome back to the Pigpen. Hey, Darren. Thank you. Look forward to chatting once again and talking about old-time football. Yeah, we are in December when, when this podcast airs, and you know, we're sort of getting into the championships of college football and the end of the season and bowl games, and that's what we're really thinking about as far as college football. And you have a very interesting story that you posted back in June uh, about the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech, and uh, we, we'd sure love to hear about this old-time football. Yeah, so this is the story is, uh, you know, I called it the. Um, I forget exactly what I called it. it was basically about you, you, Georgia. You titled it Georgia Tech hits football's first Grand Slam is your title. Yeah, so football's first Grand Slam. I knew the Grand Slam. I didn't know exactly how I worded it, but uh, but I also want to point out that they hit the reason. Well, part of the, the contribution to the to the Grand Slam was that they that they hit a rare triple as well, and the rare triple was the fact that Georgia Tech, I mean, they had three absolute stud coaches right in a row. And and those three coaches handled the team for 63 combined years. You know, wow. <laughs> and it's just one of those like, <laughs> you know, how many, you know, I mean, like, if you just think about, try to think about other places that have had phenomenally, or just very successful coaches. Uh, and to have three in a row, I mean, Notre Dame has had some great coaches, but a lot of them didn't really last that long. No, not 63 uh, years between three of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Ohio State and Michigan, and, you know, I mean, there's uh, USC. I mean, name whoever you want. There just aren't too many. You know, maybe Oklahoma or Texas or somebody had, you know, but they've tended to have somebody that just wasn't that great in between. Or didn't last that long. But here's the three for, for Georgia Tech. Starting in 1904 and running through 1919 with a 102, 29, and 7 record. So winning 70, nearly 78% of his games is a guy named John Heisman. So most football fans have heard of him. Um, he was followed by a guy who 
played there and then coached under Heisman, a guy named you know Bill Alexander, who you know isn't as uh, didn't have as great a record. He had some uneven seasons, but he also had just some absolute stud seasons. So he went 134 and 95 and 15, um, you know, for like 0.585, you know, uh, record. And then he was followed by Bobby Dodd, who, you know, was an assistant under Alexander. And so Bobby Dodd goes from 1945 to 1966, and he goes 165, 64, and 8, so for 721, you know, percentage. So so basically those three guys from 1904 – to 1966 Amazing. are the three coaches of Georgia Tech. You know, it's just crazy. So then during, um, so of the three, just from a pure record standpoint, Alexander is the least successful. And yet it was during his time that Georgia Tech, I mean, think about it. He's the least of the three in terms of winning percentage. And yet during his time, he won they beat Cal in the 1939 Rose Bowl. He beat Missouri in the 1940 Orange Bowl. They lost to Texas in the 1943 Cotton Bowl. And then they beat Tulsa in the 1944 Sugar Bowl. And so his grand slam was that they were the first team to play in the Rose, the Orange, the Cotton, and the Sugar, which were the four games until, I don't know, uh, 85-ish or something, like when yeah, Fiesta when the, Bowl and the Fiesta started, you know, right. being considered you know, uh, along those lines as a, you know, in terms of a, the top four bowl games. So, um, you know, so at the time, they, you know, it was bit, people considered it a big deal that they were the first ones to to play in all four. Now, you know, there were teams that didn't go to bowl games at all, um, and conferences that didn't go to bowl games at all, and you know, so they you know, kind of were able to do some things many other teams couldn't. But nevertheless, I don't care what, you know, they were the first ones. And so, yeah. you know, really an impressive feat. I mean, just think about that. What are, I mean, you, you have to have a lot of things fall into place to be invited to the, each of those particular bowl games because they're looking for certain criteria each year. And you have to fall in that to get an invite, first of all, and then to go and yep. beat an opponent who is a worthy opponent that's, you know, looked upon as your equal because they're trying to get the best matchup they can in those games and, you know, and to win each of those. I mean, that is quite a feat if you really sit there and think about it. Yeah. And I think, you know, these, uh, you know, like last week's uh, podcast, we talked about war years. And so this, you know, a couple of these wins came in during war years. So, yeah, you know, they probably chose Southern teams a bit more than maybe they would have otherwise. Um, just to reduce travel and you know easier access for their alums to attend the game. But again, <laughs> make up any scenario you want. They still they were the first ones playing four games. So you know it's a big deal. Um and Definitely. you know they they ended up um he stepped down after winning um or no he then took uh Georgia Tech to the to the 45 Orange Bowl. So he hit, he ran through those four, the, the four we already mentioned. Then then he went to the Orange Bowl again in 45, and then he, he resigned after that, and uh, and uh, Bobby Dodd took over. He, he <laughs> so, can stick it out three more years to try to get the double. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hit everyone twice. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So, I mean, it really it really is you know pretty remarkable record. Um, and Alexander was also one of those guys who's just pretty innovative guy. I mean, some of the things he did were – now seem kind of goofy. He, I've written in the past about him using um, the reverse QB, and I think he may have used a side saddle QB at times. But you know, the reverse reverse QB took the ball, like basically had his butt against the center's butt, and then took the snap between his legs, and then tossed it, you know, to in a single wing kind of formation, right. you know, tossed oh. it left to right or backwards, but. Yeah, um, I, I remember our conversation. We I think we did a podcast on your side saddle, uh, probably probably back a year ago now. But uh, yeah, that was, I remember that. That's man, that is fascinating. Yeah. So going back eighty years ago, and just uh, actually a hundred years ago or more with uh, Heisman. When you think about it, I mean, uh, yeah. just a great program. And we don't think about Georgia Tech in that light anymore because there's sort of they're overshadowed by some of their 
their fellow teams that are in that area, you know, Georgia for one, yeah. who's phenomenal the last uh, few years, especially, but uh, you, you know, you got to look back at some of these teams and give them credit because they had some really strong programs back in, in that, that day and the eras with the, and with, you know, those three coaches, 60 some years. Wow. That's, that's a uh, tip your hat off to, to the program directors there. Yeah. And I mean, they, they, they played in a, a lot of big games. I mean, back in, you know, uh, in the world war one era, you know, Pitt and Georgia Tech had a couple of really big, you know, games that they played, kind of national championship consequences, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, they they played in the 29 Rose Bowl when, you know, the wrong way Regal run, you mm-hmm. know, the kid from California who picked up the ball and ran the wrong way uh, and, you know, ended up at the end of the, end of the day. That's the reason uh, Georgia Tech won the game. Uh, but. You know, so I mean, they they were involved in some really some really big games, and uh, you know, like you said, not not quite as much anymore. But you know, they still play at a very high level, and you know, great school, all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, Tim, it always amazes me the the stories that you come up with, and you do this on a daily basis in your tidbits. Uh, just some, you know, maybe not the mainstream of what we think of mainstream football today. You know very popular from 80 years ago but you know some of these teams that uh, you know probably should get more attention like these georgia tech teams and some of the elements that that we discussed today with uh, going to the four bowl games but you're doing this on a daily basis why don't you share with the audience how they too can participate in in reading your daily tidbit yeah so you know the easiest thing to do is just go to footballarchaeology.com and you know, at the end of every article, there's an opportunity to subscribe. Um, just hit the button that you want to subscribe and sign up. It's free. Um, and then every day you'll get an email that, uh, uh, you know, basically 7 o'clock Eastern, you'll get an email with story. Um, and then otherwise, you know, you can follow me on, on uh, I'm still publishing on, on Twitter, on threads, on the Substack app or um, just bookmark the site and show up whenever you want to. Yeah, and I, I must add, too, uh, when you go into your substack on footballarchaeology.com on your substack and you go into the tidbit section, and there's a nice little search function there. So if you want to look up, you know, anything else about you know Coach Bobby Dodds on there, any other articles that you have him in there, it'll take you right to those and give you a nice listing so you get a nice round uh, – uh, I guess uh, full belly of what Bobby Dodds was uh, to football. So <laughs> through football archaeology yeah. uh, dot com's site. So Tim, we really appreciate you you coming on here and sharing this, and uh, we would love to talk to you again next Tuesday about some more great football. Very good. Look forward to it. That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleat Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Have you ever noticed that the lower jaw is not protected in sports? Did you know that 10,800 concussions will happen today? This has been an upward trend for the past 50 years. I'm Dr. Michael Hutchison, a practicing neuromuscular dentist. When my son wanted to participate in football and rugby, I was afraid he was gonna get a concussion. That fear led me to finding the missing link to reducing concussions. The fact is, the only part of the skull that is not protected in sports is the lower jaw. If you want to drastically reduce concussions, there are three basic jaw positions that affect concussions and two of them are not good. The correct one is called physiologic jaw position. 
it will dissipate the force away from the brain. Knowing that, I designed an appliance that put my son's jaw in the right place. And as a result, he was concussion free from fifth grade all the way to senior year. This jaw position takes those 10,800 concussions today down to 28. It's the key to concussion protection. As a parent, this is what you need to know. It's extremely important that the device you are using is on the lower jaw. Thickness of the device is important. Most importantly, it must position and hold you in your own unique personal physiologic jaw position. So if your child goes out on the field with the correct jaw position, your son or daughter will not one of those 10,800 concussions today. Get yours today at powerplusmouthguard.com. Use the promo code POWERUP2023 for 10% off.